So we need to know how we can produce data into Kinesis. So here is our Amazon Kinesis streams and the exam will expect you to know at a high level how each of these work. The first one is the SDK. The SDK allows you to write code or use the CLI to directly send data into Amazon Kinesis streams. The second one is to use the Kinesis Producer Library or KPL, remember that acronym. The Kinesis Producer Library is going to be a bit more advanced. You're going to write better code and it has some really good features that I will describe in this lecture, which allow you to get enhanced throughput into Kinesis streams. The third one is to use a Kinesis agent. So the Kinesis agent is a Linux program that runs on your server. So remember that it's an agent that runs on servers and basically allows you to get a log file, for example, and send that reliably into the Amazon Kinesis streams. Finally, you can use third party libraries that usually build upon the SDK, such as Apache Spark, Kafka Connect, NiFi, etc. And all these things will allow you to send data to Kinesis streams reliably. So look at this diagram. Remember that Kinesis streams can have different ways of getting data from various sources. Now let's do a deeper dive into all the methods on the left hand side. So the first one is to use the producer SDK and that uses the put record or put records with an S API. So anytime you see put record, that means SDK. So with a put record, as the name indicates, you send one record. And if you use put records with an S, you will send many records. Put records will use batching and therefore increase your throughput. That's because you send many records as part of one HTTP request and therefore you're saving in HTTP request and getting increased throughput. Now, if you do go over your throughput though, you will get a provision throughput exception exceeded and that's important to know how to deal with this. We'll see this in the very next slide. Now, this producer SDK can be used on various different ways. You can use it on your, on your applications but also on your mobile devices such as Android, iOS, etc. So when would we choose to use the producer SDK? Well, anytime we have some low throughput use case or we don't mind a higher latency, we want a very simple API or maybe we're just working straight from AWS Lambda. This is the kind of places where you would use the producer SDK. You need to know as well that there are some managed AWS sources for Kinesis data streams. So they, behind the scenes, use a producer SDK, but you don't see it. And so these managed sources are going to be CloudWatch logs. So you can send your logs directly from CloudWatch into Kinesis. You have AWS IoT, and we'll see this in a section. And finally, Kinesis Data Analytics is able to produce back into Kinesis data streams. So remember that. Now, how do we deal with exceptions for the Kinesis API? Well, if you get a provisioned throughput exception, that happens when you are sending more data than you can. For example, you're exceeding the number of megabytes per second or you're exceeding the number of records per second you can send to any chart. So you need to make sure when you get this that you don't have a hot chart. For example, if you have um, device ID as your key and you have 90% of your devices being iPhones, then you're going to get a hot key, a hot partition because all your devices are iPhones and it will all go to the same partition. So make sure you distribute as much as possible your key that you choose to in order not to get a hot partition. So solution is, if you get a provision throughput exception, try to do a retries with backups. That means that you will retry after uh, maybe two seconds and if it doesn't work, you'll try after four seconds and then after eight seconds, they're just like arbitrary numbers. Or you can increase the number of shards you have in Kinesis, basically to increase the, much, the amount of scaling you can do. And you need to ensure that your partition key is a good one, a very distributed one. So for example, for the mobile device, um, instead of choosing Apple versus Android, you would choose maybe the device ID, which for sure is going to be different for each of your users. Just an example. So now let's talk about the Kinesis Producer Library or KPL. You need to learn exactly how this works because this is very important going to the exam. It's an easy to use and highly configurable C++ or Java library. And personal experience, I've seen Java being used more when you use the KPL. It's used when you want to build high performance, long running producers. And it has automation for the retry mechanism. So the exception that I just described before, which we have to deal with when using the API, well, the Kinesis producer library automatically knows how to deal with this. Now, Kinesis producer library has two kinds of APIs. There is synchronous API, which is the same as the SDK, or asynchronous API, which will provide you better performance. 
but you need to deal with asynchronicity, obviously. So every time in the exam you see, okay, we need to send data asynchronously to Kinesis data streams, usually the, K uh, the Kinesis producer library or KPI will be the way to do it. It's a really nice library because it also is able to send metrics to CloudWatch for monitoring. So anytime you write an application with a KPL, you can monitor it directly in CloudWatch. And it supports a very important mechanism called batching. And batching has two subsections and they're both turned on by default and they will help you increase the throughput and decrease the cost. You need to know those absolutely. The first one is to collect records and write to multiple shards in the same put records API call. And the second one is to aggregate, which increase the latency, but increase the efficiencies as well. So it's the capability to store multiple records in one record, and you're able to go over the 1000 records per limit with this. I'll describe these to you in the very next slide anyway. And that will allow you to increase the payload size and therefore increase throughput. So you can reach that one megabyte per second limit more consistently. If you want to use compression, so that means make your records smaller, then this is not something the Kinesis producer library supports out of the box, unfortunately. You would have to implement this yourself. When we do send a record with the Kinesis producer library, though, it's a very special record, and you cannot just read it using the CLI. For this, you would need to use the KCL or a special helper library, and we'll see the KCL in the next lecture. So let's talk about this batching because this is such an important concept to understand in Kinesis Producer Library and something the exam will ask you about. So here's, for example, me sending a record to Kinesis and it's two kilobytes and I'm sending it using the Kinesis Producer Library. Turns out it's not going to be sent right away. It's going to wait a little bit of time to see if more records are coming in. And maybe I'm sending a next record of 40 kilobytes. Maybe I'm sending a next record of 500 kilobytes. And what Kinesis Producer Library will do is that at some point it will say, wait a minute, I can aggregate all these records into one record. So instead of sending three records, now we're sending one record and that record is still less than one megabyte. And so we're going to do this in multiple times. So maybe we're going to have 1, 30, 80, and 200 kilobyte again, and it's going to aggregate that one as well into one record. So now we have two records. So we've seen what aggregation is. And then it's going to say, wait a minute, now we have to send two big records, but we're not going to use two put record API. We're going to use one of them and we'll do collection. So we'll use the put records API. So here you see, I wanted to send seven records to Kinesis and I end up doing only one API call because we have aggregation and collection. And so how does Kinesis know how long to wait to batch these records? So you can control it using this record max buffer time, which defaults to 100 milliseconds. Basically, you're saying, okay, I'm willing to wait 100 milliseconds. So that's adding a little bit of latency at the trade-off of it being more efficient. So if you want less delay, you would decrease that setting. And if you want more batching, you would increase that setting. So that's it for the KPL. Just remember the batching mechanism. It's really important. Last way to produce to Kinesis is to use the Kinesis agent. And so this agent will basically be installed and it will monitor log files and directly sends them to Kinesis data streams. It's just a configuration to do. It's a Java based agent and actually it's built on top of the KPL library that makes it really reliable and efficient. You would install this only in Linux based server environments for now. So the features is to write from multiple directories and write to multiple streams. It has a routing feature based on the directory or log file you're using, and it can even pre-process the data before sending it to Kinesis data streams. It can do single line divisions, it can do CSV to JSON, log to JSON, and on top of it, the Kinesis agent is really well written, so it will handle anything like file, uh, log file rotation, checkpointing, and retry upon failures. And because it uses the KPL library, then it will emit log, log metrics to CloudWatch for monitoring. So anytime you need to do aggregation of logs in mass um, in almost real time, then the Kinesis agent is the way to go. All right, so we've seen all the ways to produce into Kinesis. I know that's a lot, uh, but remember, at a high level, you need to understand how they work, and I hope I've achieved just that. I will see you in the next lecture.